Hello everybody, welcome to another Yellow Chair Devotional. We are in a whole series focusing on God and science, which is why we're in my kitchen. We've been doing a science experiment together every single day, and then we've been opening our Bibles. We've been seeing how much we can learn from science about God the master scientist. And also there's a lot of lessons for you and me to learn along the way too. So today we're going to look at a story that I don't know, I've always found it kind of weird. We're going to be in Genesis chapter 19. Genesis chapter 19, verse 26 is what we're going to read together. Genesis 19, verse 26. So while you grab your Bible and you're flipping there, I want to get you caught up to date. All right, so there's this man named Lot. Lot and his family live in the area of Sodom and Gomorrah. Oh. And there is not a lot of good stuff going on in Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, we talked when we talked about Noah and God's decision to flood the earth and destroy people, how it broke God's heart. But God can't tolerate that much evil because it's going to continue to spread and pull more people away from him. And all oh, it hurts because God loves everybody. But he finally says, I need to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And he tells Lot and his family, you need to get out. You still follow me. So get out of town. Be safe. And then he gives the instruction, don't look back. Don't watch me destroy it. It already breaks my heart that I'm having to do this, God. Oh, he goes, don't, don't watch. Don't watch your home get destroyed. Don't watch your neighbors and your, maybe your friends. Oh, don't watch it. Just flee. Just go. Well, did you find Genesis 19, 26? Well, we see that the Lord is destroying the cities. Verse 25 says that he destroyed the whole Jordan Valley. Everyone living in the cities and even all the plants. Oh. And then verse 26, at that point, Lot's wife looked back. And when she did, she became a pillar of salt. She turned into salt. Now, I don't really know what the symbolic meaning of that is, but I do know this. She didn't follow God's instructions. She looked back. And as a result, she lost her life too. Oh, following instructions is important, isn't it? Well, we're gonna do a science experiment here where if we didn't follow the instructions, it wouldn't work very well. It would not work very well at all. So I'm gonna go click on my tea kettle here because I've got an electric kettle that's warming up water. Because here's what we need. I've got a mason jar here, and it's a big one with the wide open mouth, all right? So you could use a flower vase. You can kind of look, you just need a jar. You want it to be glass, something to hold hot water, and it's gotta have a bigger opening in it, okay? Then we're going to make what kind of looks like a salt crystal, but we're gonna do it with borax. Oh, we're gonna do it with borax. Now it would also work with salt or with sugar, but it works, we get the best crystals with borax, okay? So this, you find it in the laundry section. You can actually use this for cleaning. It's, it kind of suds up a little bit like a soap. Okay, so we need some borax. I've got some food coloring so that I can try and put some color to my crystal. And then we need a pipe cleaner. We need a pipe cleaner. So to start off, we're gonna decide what kind of crystal do we wanna make? What shape do you wanna make with your pipe cleaner? So I'm going, I don't really know how to make much for fancy shapes. So I'm just gonna twist it like this and see if I can make it look like a fish, you know, kind of like the Christian fish symbol, all right? I'm gonna let that be my crystal grower because here's the key. I wanna make sure that this fits into this without touching anything else. We don't want it to touch the bottom or the sides. Okay, so we wanna make sure that it fits. So I'm actually gonna make my fish a little bit plumper so that it doesn't touch any of the sides. 
Now, I'm gonna move the camera down to the workspace here so you can see what I'm doing. So I've got my jar, I've got my creation here, my pipe cleaner creation. Now I'm gonna take some string because we're gonna have to dangle our fish in here. And I'm just gonna tie some string around this. Do, do, do. All of these instructions that we wanna follow correctly. Okay, so I'm gonna just tie a little tennis shoe knot if I get my fingers to work. I'm gonna trim off the extra. And now we're gonna measure, right? We don't wanna just eyeball it. We gotta measure to make sure it's gonna work. Okay, so I'm gonna lower it down. And remember, I don't want him to touch the bottom. So I'm gonna figure out where he needs to dangle. And I'm gonna grab a pencil or a pen or something. And I'm gonna wrap my string around here because we're gonna have him dangle off of this. So I actually am gonna make him a little bit, I'm gonna do this. Do that number so he can dangle. So we're gonna twist this around here. And I'm gonna check where do I need him to land. And then I'm gonna cut my string. I'm gonna actually grab some tape. And I'm gonna tape this onto my pencil now. So I gotta get him at the right height. So remember, we don't want him touching the bottom. Don't want it to touch any of the sides. Position it, wrap my string around. Now I'm gonna tape it. Okay. So now that we've got him ready to go in, my little goldfish here, now we're gonna make our solution. We're gonna make our solution. Now we're going to make what is called a super saturated solution. Super saturated. So to start out, we need boiling water. Boiling water. So that's why I had my electric kettle going, already boiling some water. So you might need to ask the grown-up for some help with this. Maybe you boil some water in the microwave or on the stove, but we need three cups of boiling water. Now my jar here actually gives me some measurements and I know that this is my three cup line. Well, we could also use a measuring cup like mine here, my glass measuring cup, but we're just gonna pour our hot water in. Pour in our water here, three cups of hot water. All right, now the water, so I'm gonna grab a pot holder gonna be warm okay we don't want to burn anything the water is what we'll call the solvent the solvent because it's what things are being dissolved into right we've all put salt into water or sugar into tea and we've watched it dissolve we've all dissolved things before well this is gonna be our solvent and now here my borax is my solute my solute. And so we have 18 tablespoons. So here's my tablespoon, my measuring spoon for one tablespoon. And I've already measured it out. 18 tablespoons of borax to my three cups of water. My solute, my solvent. This is what's getting dissolved in. So rather than count it out again, I'm just going to slowly start adding it in here. Now, when we put salt into water, maybe if we're cooking pasta or making soup or something, it dissolves right in and you can't tell where the salt is anymore. You can just taste the effect of the salt, right? Well, when we make a super saturated solution, which is some fun alliteration, when we make a super saturated solution, there is so much of our solute that there's not enough room in the water to dissolve it all. There's not enough room in my solvent to, for all of the borax to dissolve. So even though, even though I'm stirring and you would think that it would dissolve, I'm gonna lift this up for you to see, try not to spill, it's still swirly in there. It's still cloudy. It's even collecting on the bottom a little bit. There's no more room in the water for it to dissolve. 
I can keep stirring, but the borax is there to stay. And that's how we know that it's going to be looking for a place to go. And in this case, we want it to go on our pipe cleaner. So now we can pick a color. What color do you want to use? Well, how about some red? How about some red? So I'm just going to put a few drops of my red food coloring. Actually, that's feeling a little like it's plugged and I don't want to make a big mess with it. So then we'll maybe just add a little yellow. few drops of a food coloring. Careful so we don't stain. And now my food coloring is going to spread out. But do you see how on the bottom, do you see how that's still, there's that borax, because this is a super saturated solution. There still can see my borax solute that won't fully dissolve into the water solvent. So now, now it's time to drop in my pipe clean. We're gonna drop him in and now make sure he's not touching anything. Make sure we're not touching it or rearrange if we need to. And now he's gonna sit there for an entire day. Now what's so crazy is within just a few minutes, you'll be able to start seeing crystals forming. It doesn't take long because all of that extra borax, all of our extra solute needs a place to go. It needs a place to go and we've given it a hairy, fuzzy pipe cleaner. What a great, attractive surface for our borax to go. So I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm going to move this out of the way and try not to bump or spill. And I'm going to show you the one that I already made. I'm going to show you the one that I already made. And here it is. What do you think? Look at all those crystals. Do you see how the light reflects off of it? It's so hard. It's so hard. Look at that heart that I made. Now over here, see how we don't have as much crystals right there? Those were spots that hit the edge of the jar. Oh, I tried to follow the instructions but I still ended up with a section that hit the side of the jar and so it didn't get to be as crystally, did it? Now you could hang this in your room in the window and it'll catch all the light. You, I don't, you can make a Christmas ornament, all sorts of decorations. Um, but there's so many different sizes. Look at all these different crystals. If I hold that up, if I don't want it to be all blurry. But we see that something beautiful comes out of it. But we've got to follow the instructions. We've got to follow the instructions. If I only put a little bit of borax in, it's not going to work. If I use cold water, well, maybe, but it might take longer because now what's going to happen? When we think of our, of our water cycle, when we think of how water works, does water evaporate? And does it really evaporate when it's hot? Right, if you've got boiling water on the stove, what is the evaporating off of it? You can see it. Steam, right? Our hot water, because it's cooler temperature here, we're going to have the water cooling down and evaporating off, which means there's even less solvent. My water's evaporating off, and what's it leaving behind? My borax solute, my crystals, my crystals. But it all comes from how we follow the instructions. How we follow the instructions. God told Lot and his family, don't turn around and look back. Don't turn and look back. I don't want you seeing this. But Lot's wife didn't follow those instructions. If you grab your Bible again and we turn to the New Testament, Jesus talks about the most important instructions ever the most important instructions. We're going to go to the Gospel of Mark. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. We're going to go to the Gospel of Mark, Mark chapter 12. Mark chapter 12. Pause the video if you need a little bit more time to find Mark chapter 12, because I love when we're able to read our Bibles together. So pause, hit play when you're ready. We're going to read Mark chapter 12, verse 29. Verse 29. Someone just asked Jesus, what's the most important instruction? What's the most important thing that we should follow? And verse 29, Jesus answered, the most important command is this, 
Listen, people of Israel, the Lord our God, he is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God. Love him with all your heart, all your strength, all your mind, and all your strength, your soul. I keep messing this up today. Love him with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. The second most important command is this. Love your neighbor as you love yourselves. These two commands are the most important commands. The most important instructions that we can follow. Loving God. Loving God and loving other people. It all comes down to what we do with our hearts. Do we give our heart to Jesus and say, I love you, Jesus. And because I love you, I want to love other people too. Because did you know that there is no one in this world that God does not love? Oh, right? He loved the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, even though he had to make a hard choice on behalf of trying to win others to his love. He loves everybody, even the people who don't love him back. But in the meantime, for those of us who do love God, he says, well, you show love to other people too. And when you show them love, we're showing them what God is like. Oh, it's hard to love people who are hard to love. It's hard to love people who maybe pick on us who are mean to us, who leave us out, maybe people who have hurt us in the past. Oh, is it hard to love? Absolutely. But you know something? The more time we focus on loving God, he lives in our hearts and makes it way easier to love other people. And when we love other people, they go, man, what makes them so loving? What makes them so different from everybody else? They go, I wonder if it's because they love God. It's like a whole full circle picture. We love God, so we love others. And when people see us loving others, they realize it's because we love God. And maybe they go, I want to be loving too. It's important to follow the instructions. Otherwise, things get a little messed up. But the most important instruction of all, love. That's what it all comes down to. So as you spend time making a solute, a saturated, super saturated solution with a solvent of water and a solute of borax, be thinking of the gift of love and how can we love God, love other people, the most important instruction of all. Let's say a prayer and close up. Dear God, we're so thankful for your amazing love for us. And may we love you in return and show that love to others so that they then are drawn to you as well. It's just one big full circle of love. We're so thankful for that love in your name. Amen. In the video description below, there's some science reflection questions. You can do that whether it's following my video or whether it's doing it on your own at your home. But there's the list of supplies, hopefully everything you need to be a scientist when it comes to this experiment. And just be thinking, thinking through it all, what does this teach me about love? The most important instruction of all. And I'll see you next time.